Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And that's right, Vane Baron Lane. And man, am I excited for today's video. There's numerous reasons for that. First of all, Baron Lane Vane. I have not seen it even once. In, in, I have not even seen it. And my god, it is strong. But let me tell you this. It is incredibly, and I repeat, incredibly hard to play. There are so many weaknesses to it, but there is there is things that you can use to your power, especially after the buff that Vayne uh, reached. But I'm not going to talk about that now. I'll talk quickly about how to build Vayne, and then we'll get to the gameplay part of the video. And during the gameplay part, I'm going to explain all the things that I've learned about Vayne that can actually make you a really good Vayne player, especially in the Baron lane. So let's quickly talk about the build for Vayne, because the build is very easy. Let me just tell you, Blade of the Rune King first, you know, this is going to be your first item and your first power spike. Second item, now here it depends. Look, you can either go for a Phantom Dancer or a Static Shift. See, when you're playing ADC Vein, I actually recommend Static Shift second because you're going to have a support with you to save you. But when you're playing Baron Lane Vein, I actually in 100% of my games went for a Phantom Dancer. I have tried uh, Static Shift, but you know, 100% of the times, Phantom Dancer. And the reason for that is because you're going to get ganked. You're not going to have a support next to you. You're basically alone, right? You're Baron Lane Vane. You're not, you don't have a support with you. So that's why you go for Phantom Dancer second. Um, boots, you know, always Glutinous Greaves, you know, for the lifesteal. Really, really good. And the enchantment that you want to get, uh, Stasis Enchant, is really, really powerful. You can also go for Quicksilver Enchant. I never see people go for this one, but you can go for this one if you're against, like, Heavy CC. Like, Varus Ultimate, uh, Galio Taunt, Evelyn's Charm, Ari's Charm, Seraphim's Ulti, things like that. Quicksilver can actually be powerful, especially on Vayne. Because a major weakness of Vayne is CC. You know, when they stun you, charm you, the Quicksilver can actually get you out of that situation. And then with your ultimate, you can become invisible and escape, right? So Quicksilver can be good. As your third item, always Infinity Edge. Never, ever in your life do this. Never, ever. Ever. If I see this, I'm going to personally come and whoop your ass. Let me tell you why you should never do this. So, Blade of the Rune King only has 20 attack damage. And it gives you 35% attack speed. Phantom Dancer has 0 attack damage. Static Shift has 0 attack damage. Now, imagine having 3 items on Vayne and only having 20 attack damage. Like, what? And Infinity Edge gives you 55 attack damage. And let me tell you one uh, another thing. You always want to start with this. The, 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 what is it called? The BF sword. Because as I said, these two items are attack speed items, right? And when you get the BF sword, it's a massive power spike, right? You're just going to get, boom, 40 attack damage. With the attack speed that you already have from your items, this is going to be an incredibly powerful purchase. And especially this is going to make you super strong. Like when you get this third item, Infinity Edge, you're going to be, you're going to do a lot of damage. Um, and as your fourth item, I always go for static shift. Even if you're against tanks, just go for the static shift because you're going to kill tanks anyways because you're a vein, you deal true damage. So static shift is going to allow you to deal like a massive amount of burst damage to the enemies as well. Now as your last item, it depends. If you're against a lot of tanks, go for the mortal reminder. Otherwise, I just recommend you to go for a guardian angel. You know, if you're against champions like Lee Sin, Jinx, you know, that just want to kill you and have attack damage, guardian angel can actually be very powerful in the very late game. So that was the build, very easy. So let's talk about the runes now. I tried everything. I basically I tried everything here. And for the first rune, I have tried fleet footwork. And okay, let me tell you this. If you're playing Vayne for the first time, second time, third time, I actually always recommend you to go for a fleet footwork in the Baroning. Always. Because this one is going to allow you to play a bit more safe. You know, even if you get punished by the enemy, which you will, uh, the fleet footwork is going to save your ass with the healing. But if you're actually good and comfortable at Vayne, Conqueror always conqueror because um this one is just gonna give you so much damage when you get the conqueror stacks it's actually crazy now as my second room i've tried a lot here i've tried hunter vampires i've tried triumph i've tried gathering storm i've tried brutal and eh, no i've not tried champion so let me tell you triumph sucks you know it sucks it's absolutely useless hunter vampires is amazing See, Brutal is also nice if you really want to bully the enemy in the early game, which you can do on Vayne, even if you think you cannot, you can, and I'll explain it to you during the gameplay part. I recommend Hunter Vampirism because when you get a few kills, 
it's just such a powerful rune, the Hunter Vampirism, especially on Vayne. The, the, the vampirism that it gives you is just super, super powerful. You know, the bonus healing with the Blade of the Rune King as well. You can just continuously fight the enemies. It just really synergizes with Vayne. As my third rune, uh, I often like to go for Hunter Titan. Again, because Vayne is actually quite weak into CC. So this is going to reduce the, 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 the time that you're going to get taunted, charmed, stunned, things like that, right? You can also go for Bone Plating if you're against burst champions like Zed, Evelyn, Lee Sin, because bone plating is going to reduce their burst damage. I have also experimented with conditioning, and let me tell you that conditioning is pretty decent on Vayne, but the only flaw is the first dragon fight. It's like it doesn't provide you anything during the first dragon fight, and in the early game, it's useless, right? It doesn't give you anything, so you know. It's really powerful in the late game and really powerful at minute 5 especially when you actually get the the, uh, the conditioning. But as I said, Hunter Titan is often better to reduce CC. As your 4th rune, Sweet Tooth, because Sweet Tooth is broken. As your spells, always go for a barrier. You already have enough damage. Trust me on that one guys when you're playing Vayne. Barrier and Flash. Okay, enough about this, let's get into the gameplay. I'm sorry that I'm not editing the video, it's almost 4 a.m. Because I was playing Vayne the entire day. Uh, okay, I can finally talk about Vayne gameplay. So, Vayne Baron Lane. Let me tell you why Vayne Baron Lane is now a thing and wasn't a thing before. So, they buffed Vayne's second ability. They buffed the passive of it, right? When you hit an enemy three times in a row, you're going to do bonus damage to them which is equal to a percentage of their HP and a flat number. They buffed the flat number from like 30 damage to 50 damage in the early game. You're hearing it correct. From 30 damage to 50 damage. That's almost a double buff. So let's immediately take a look at how I'm laning against this Fiora. As you guys may know, Fiora is considered the most broken Baron laner in the game. Vayne can play against Fiora. And the funny thing is, this Fiora even has a fleet footwork, so she has incredible sustain. And let's take a look at how I play against her. So here you can see, even though she has a fleet footwork, I'm just harassing her. And this is what you can do against any melee champion. Against Garen, against Renekton, against Fiora, against Camille, anything. Let me tell you a thing though. Oh, take a look at this. So just take a look at this. This is what you can do, because she's melee. Let's take a look. She's gonna take the heal. I'm just hitting her continuously here. Boom, boom. I have my barrier ready. You have slain an enemy. What is that? This is the buff that she received. Are you guys seeing how much damage the, the, the second ability is dealing? It's an insane amount. Vayne can actually win lanes like this. Let me tell you guys. One super big weakness which has lost me many games on Vayne in the game. Uh, many games on Vayne, which is vulnerability to ganks. You always have to know where the enemy jungler is. This is especially important on Vayne. And let me promise you guys, after playing Vayne for like 40 games in two days, this is like, this is basically the thing that is going to lose you the game if you don't pay attention to it. Right? Like, it's okay to die sometimes, but if you die in the early game to a jungler, oh, she flashes away. If you die early game to a jungler and your wave gets crashed under your turret, you're gonna continuously get ganked and you cannot do anything about it. So let me tell you a way to actually avoid oh I actually have to run here to actually avoid those ganks. So the first way is warding. You have to have good wards, and that's why you can see I had a ward right in that bush. See that? In that bush I had a ward, so I would know that the Kazakh was there. I already knew that the Kazakh was there because I actually saw him. So that was the point where I was playing very passive. Another thing that you have to do is when, you know, when the timer approaches 1 minute 20, 1 minute 30, generally the jungler is going to be uh, ganking, right? Also, what you need to pay attention to, where is the enemy jungler starting? And you can see that by looking at the enemy laner, see which lane is po potentially leashing for them. Like, if you see that the, bar uh, that the bot lane is leashing for them, you know that he's going to be in your top lane, uh, that he could be ganking you at 1 minute 20 or something like that. So these are all ways that you can avoid it. Another important thing is your third ability. Whenever the jungler is jumping on you, uh, you have to position safely, of course. Push him away with your third ability. Yet another tip that I have for you, and the reason that I'm giving you so many tips on how to avoid ganking, because this is truly what actually lost me a lot of games on Vayne, is position yourself here, on this side of the, of the, of the map. If you feel like you're going to get ganked, 
position yourself on the side of the map because then it's gonna take the jungler longer to actually rotate to you right so if you feel like you're gonna get ganked position yourself like you know to on the side of the map okay so vain um when you're th there is different ways to actually outrage your enemy so the first way is poking them vain can poke with her first ability basically you just use your first ability get close to the enemy and boom hit the empowered attack and go out you can just continuously do this to harass the enemy like you saw me do in the early game and um, when she gets to like half hp or maybe even lower you can potentially go all in so in this video i'm actually probably going to explain nine like 90 percent of my explanation is how to play vain, vain in the early game because if you survive the early game of Vayne without being like super behind, you pretty much win the game. And the reason for that is obviously because Vayne is an absolute late game powerhouse. Like even if you play badly in the late game, if you are fat, you're still going to be able to carry your team. It's just so easy to do that with a, with a Vayne that's very fat. So how do you get fat? Of course, by having a good early game. Um, another very, very important thing to know about Vayne. I'm actually gonna ask it to you guys. Test your knowledge. Let me ask you. I was gonna say something about your first ability. There is a thing that you can do with your first ability which will increase your damage per second dramatically. Tell me what it is. Let me know in the comments. Let's see what, what is this Fiora trying to do, by the way. This is just this is just absurd. See, when you get your ult, uh, by the way, put it in the comments, you know, test your knowledge. What is a thing that you can do with your first ability that will increase your damage per second dramatically? So put it in the comments and I'll let you know in like half a minute or something. Uh, yeah, when you get your ultimate, um, of course you become way stronger, right? When you use your ultimate, you get bonus attack damage. Your first ability uh, makes you invisible, which is very powerful to surprise your enemy and to run away from them, avoid attacks, things like that. And um, just use this ultimate, right? Don't hold it. When you can kill the enemy if you are like that, just use it. Why can you just use it? Because they they buffed the cooldown. And with that, I mean they, they took away 5 seconds of the cooldown on every single rank of the ultimate. So you are going to have your ultimate more often. Okay, let me explain to you guys what the thing is that you can do with the first ability to increase the damage per second dramatically. Take a look at what I'm doing right now with my, third, with my first ability. Just take a look. Now, here, see that? What is it that I'm doing? I am rolling into the wall. And when you roll into the wall with your first ability, you're going to be able to immediately shoot a basic attack. Like basic attack, first ability, basic attack. And this all goes super fast because you roll into a wall. See, um, when you roll like normally, it's going to take like half a second to roll. But when you roll in a wall, it's instant. It's instantly. So that's what you can do. So when you roll into a wall, you're going to be able to instantly hit a basic attack on the enemy and increase your damage per second by a lot, right? Um, another thing that's very, very important to understand about Vayne is Vayne is an absolute 1v1 monster. You should pretty much be able to win 1v1s against almost every champion. Um, the exceptions are assassins, right? Because assassins can one-shot you, like Zed like Akali, like um, Zed, Akali, Katarina, Evelyn. So these champions could potentially one-shot you, maybe even Kha'Zix. Um, the counter that you do have against them is your third ability, to push them away. And this ability is incredibly powerful as well. I don't see many, like, I mean, I do see Vayne players use it effectively, but not a lot. See, your third ability is not only good for pushing enemies into the wall, it's not only good for that. It is also good to just push enemies away. Oh, and the Lulu actually rotated here, so I'm just going for an incredibly aggressive uh, fight with this guy. Just take a look at this. This is what you can do on Vayne, guys. Do I even care about a turret right here? This is what Vayne can do. If you're in a 1v1 or a 2v1 situation, of course, and you have your ultimate, you are so powerful. And chasing down an enemy, obviously the easiest thing to do on Vayne. Vayne gets bonus movement speed when she's when she's when when she is chasing an enemy. So you should never be worried about not being able to catch up to your enemy. You're always gonna be able to catch up to your enemy. So now let's talk about the active of the second ability, which is uh, increasing your attack speed 
for three attacks and giving you bonus lifesteal or vampirism as, we sh as, as, as you should call it. So this is really good if you're like guaranteed to hit three attacks very like very easily. Let's say the Fiora dives me with her first ability. What I can do then immediately is just click on my second ability and hit her with three attacks very very fast. First of all, I'm gonna deal a lot of damage to her. Secondly, I'm gonna heal up the damage that she dealt to me. Because you get bonus healing, right? That's how it works. So you wanna use the active of the second ability when an enemy dived you, for example. Or when you use your ultimate to dive the enemy. See, I'm trying to make this very easy to understand, but let me tell you that Vayne is one of the hardest champions to play in the game. I don't know why Lulu just ulted me, it was probably a mistake. But Vayne is definitely one of the hardest champions to play in the game. Especially Baron Lane Vayne. Especially Baron Lane Vayne. Now the reason that it's harder, of course, because you have no support in Baron Lane. Like right now you can see the game is being made easier by me because Lulu is actually supporting me, which is very nice, right, for me. And on Vayne, um, this is another very, very important thing to understand is you really want to hit three attacks in a row on an enemy, right? You don't want to hit an attack on this guy, and then that guy, and then this guy, that guy. You really want to hit three attacks, one after the other, on on the same enemy. Of course, to deal that bonus damage, because that's what Vayne is all about. It's about the passive of the second ability. And this is also the ability that you want to upgrade first, and fully upgrade first, because when you hit an enemy three times in a row, you're going to be dealing tw like you know all the damage that it has the base damage plus 12 per 12% of the enemy's hp obviously incredibly powerful against tanks like garen brom you know just tanks because it doesn't matter how much armor they have you are going to be dealing that 12% da hp damage of them which is incredibly powerful also against alistar for example one second let me take my pen and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, you know, I really, um, and if you enjoyed, give it a like, because this video probably, you know, I would say like 20 hours of gameplay went into this video. Now, I, I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy the gameplay, it was a bit frustrating to learn Vayne, I mean, I already knew how to play Vayne, of course, you know, in as the ADC role, but in the Baron lane, I genuinely believed Vayne Baron lane would be good. But it just took me so many games, man, so many games to get good at it and really understand. Because as I said, like you're so vulnerable to ganks and you're more powerful than you think. I already explained the gank ganking part and about the part that you're more powerful, you, you can just dive when you feel like, like, like normally a champion that wouldn't be able to dive, Vayne can do that. Vayne is incredibly good at diving. Here, take a look at this. There is a Jinx right here. Whenever I see her, I just use my ultimate. I dive in the middle of the enemy just with the Lulu. Just take a look at how powerful I am. This, like, this is what I mean. It may not have looked like I was going to be able to just kill them like that. But I can. And here you can see I'm being even more aggressive here. Just look at how much damage I dealt to the Fiora there. So, on Vayne, you just kind of have to know when you can and when you cannot go in. You just... And um, the way that you can really learn this is like feeling. You know, you're... you're after you've played Vayne a lot, you feel when you can go in and when you cannot go in. I really can't give you a tip on how to make this better for yourself. Just, you know what? I can give you a tip. A tip would be to limit test. So, even if you feel like, okay, I probably cannot kill this guy under his turret, give it a try. Just, you know, give it a try. And when you give it a try, you may or may not kill him, right? And if you don't kill him, you're like, okay, that was a bit off my limit. I wasn't able to do it. Or, and, but if you did kill him, of course, you know, it opens up new opportunities. Because then you're like, hey, wait, I can actually do, I can actually get this kill when I dive the turret. And then you're going to be more aggressive on Vayne. And if you play, an ag if you play a Vayne aggressively the right way, man, you, you're going to hard carry games. You're gonna absolutely hard carry games. Trust me on that one, guys. So here, again, gonna be playing very aggressively. I was like ready to dive them. I was waiting behind the wall so they wouldn't see me. Uh, but they didn't actually come close, so yeah, I didn't go in on the floor. <clears throat> so here the Zed is in the bot lane, but we're still fighting, because why the hell not, right? Because I'm vain. So let's take a look at what's gonna happen. They all dive on me, of course. 
I use my stasis enchant to tank up some damage. And I'm using my uh, invisibility to, to, to not allow them to dive me, right? My invisibility was really, really good there. Because the Akali and the Fiora was, were diving me. And that's where your ultimate comes in very handy, right? Because after you use the stasis, you can just become invisible with your first ability. And when you become invisible, see this is also a thing that I see. When you use your ultimate and then your first ability, sometimes it's better to just not hit the enemy immediately. Because you're going to be becoming invisible for like, what, one second or one and a half second? I think it's one and a half second. But if you actually basic attack an enemy, you're not going to be invisible anymore. So that's why sometimes it's better to just stay invisible for like one and a half seconds. Because you can either escape, reposition yourself, or surprise the enemy with it. So keep that in mind. You don't always have to immediately hit your enemy when you use your ultimate and then your first ability, right? Sometimes it's better to just stay invisible and try to position yourself correctly. And man, this, this is probably a lot of information to you. And I really want you to not get discouraged when you lose your first 10 games on vein. When you go 0 7, 0 7, 0 7 and be like, man, this champion sucks. No, the champion doesn't suck, you suck. And how can you stop sucking? By actually practicing the champion, applying the tips that I gave to you. And that's that's like this is actually so important because the way that I had to learn all this is by playing Vayne like 40 games in 40 games uh, in two days. But the way that you can learn it is of course listening to my tips, and it's probably gonna take you less games to actually get pretty good at Vayne because of all the tips that I gave you, right? And you should really take them serious because I am telling you. Uh, so frustrating, you know, so frustrating because I was almost kind of hesitating about Vayne Baron lane because I just kept dying, I kept getting wrecked in my lane, but then when I was actually limit testing, you know, like diving, trying to fight the enemy, that's when I realized, hey, Vayne is actually a really strong lane bully against melee champions like Fiora, Garen, Renekton, Camille, you can actually win in the early game, and um, these things are so important to understand about Vayne and they will truly bring your game to the next level. So that's why I said, you know, if, if you really enjoyed this video, give it a like because it took me so much time. <laughs> uh, also, if you haven't put down a comment yet, I'm doing a 15 skin giveaway in every month, you know, so in July as well. All you got to do to enter is put down a comment under the video. Let's see. What have I not talked about? I've talked about it a lot, but there is actually more. There's always more to talk about when you're playing Bane, man. This champion is just... It's, it's, man, I, I find it really fun to play. She's so fun to play, but she's so frustrating if it doesn't work. It's so frustrating if it doesn't One of the most frustrating champions to play when you're like 0, 3, 0, 4 and keep getting snowballed. But the thing with Vayne is you can always come back. Don't get discouraged. Even if... You, I mean, you're, you're kind of supposed to lose early game. Even though I gave you all these tips, Vayne is still pretty weak in the early game, right? Even with all these tips, she's still pretty weak in the early game. So, you're likely not going to be able to snowball the enemy in the early game. But you may get a kill or something. But even if you get a kill, you shouldn't get too ahead of yourself, right? Like when I killed the Fiora in the early game here, I didn't get too ahead of myself. I still played my lane passively. And this is what you have to do on Vayne. Because you're not, like, you're not a snowballing champion. Even if you get one kill... You're not going to be able to like easily get another kill. Because Fiora is a really strong early game champion and Vayne is not. So even if she dies to you, even if she's 500 gold behind, she can still win a 1v1 guys. Really, she can still win a 1v1. But if you die to the Fiora, then you're actually doomed. She's always going to actually kill you in a 1v1 then. So that's the risk that you're taking when you play Vayne. It's high risk, high reward. And... If you apply the tips that I gave to you, you make the high risk, I would say almost medium risk, but it's still pretty high. Because you can still get absolutely wrecked in your lane, guys. So with that, I really hope you enjoyed this video of Vayne. I'm so sorry that I didn't edit the video. As I said, it's like 4, it's literally 4 a.m. right now, as you can see. So, because <laughs> I was playing so much Vayne. Um, let's take a look at how much damage I did in this game, which should be pretty interesting. Wait, am I Grandmaster again? Really? Oh, I, I got 36,000 damage, guys. So, 
thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy that I made this video, man. I'm so happy that I kept playing Baron Dane Vane. I really hope that you guys are also going to give it a try. And yeah, I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.